Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for this session, uh, Keeping Healthy Finances and Credit During and After COVID-19. Uh, my name is Otis Mushonga, and I'm the Manager of Programs and Services at Access Community Capital Fund. I'm here today with uh, Susan Henry from Alterna Savings, um, who will introduce herself uh, and tell us a little bit about who she is and what she does at Alterna. Great, thank you, Otis, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, again, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Susan Henry, and I'm the Manager of Community Investments here at Alterna Savings Credit Union. Um, I've been with Alterna for the last 20 years, and in my role, I manage our community microfinance program, um, a program that provides access to affordable financial products and services for those who are underserved and underrepresented. And um, just to tell you a little bit about Alterna Savings, um, Alterna Savings has been the good in banking for the last 111 years. We were established back in 1908. And um, Alterna Savings owned a Alterna Bank. And between the two organizations, uh, they have over $8.7 billion in funds under management. We are provincially regulated, so we operate in the province of Ontario. Uh, we have 35 branches and we serve 169,000 members. Great, thank you, Susan. And just to tell you a little bit about Access Community Capital Fund, we are a registered charitable organization that gives everyone in our community the opportunity to reach their potential through sustainable employment and self-employment. We provide access to affordable microloans, which will help individuals achieve their dreams of owning a small business or a reward, uh, pursue a rewarding career here in Canada. We work in partnership with Alterna Savings uh, as they are our banking partner. Uh, and uh, this relationship has been going on for more than 20 years now. So we all understand that the economic impact of COVID-19 has been far reaching uh, with uh, the onset of uh, the pandemic uh, in Canada alone, we have seen that over 3 million people have been affected through either loss of employment or reduced work hours, which has resulted in financial insecurity due to income loss or reduction in income. And as a response to this, uh, the government of Canada has come up with a few measures to help individuals and businesses as well. And one of the most notable uh, program is the Emergency Response uh, Benefit, uh, or CERB. And this you can find uh, on, via the Canada website, uh, Government of Canada website. And um, I know that most people have uh, taken advantage of it or are taking advantage of this program as it allows them to uh, get some income support to help them meet their immediate needs. So through this webinar, we're going to be talking to a few uh, topics around how uh, individuals uh, can uh, leverage uh, the, the uh, key, key uh, topics uh, around budgeting, uh, income, uh, looking at their credit and how you can manage your debt during this time. And with, with that, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Susan Henry, who is going to walk us through the uh, larger part of uh, the presentation uh, before we open it up to uh, questions and answers at the end of uh, the session. Thank you, Otis. Great, thank you, Otis. And um, many of you may be familiar with the current pandemic crisis. We're all in it, so um, you know it's not something we are getting away from. Um, we're seeing many people who are being laid off um, from businesses, and um, we're also seeing other businesses that's being forced to close their doors. So these are definitely unprecedented um, times. And so, you know, this is a time where we really need to think about how do we refocus our household budget. And if you don't already have a budget, it's a tool which lists your income and your expenses. It helps you to manage your money. 
it keeps you on track, and it can prepare you for financial difficult times, similar to what we're in today. Now, more than ever, we need to prioritize our expenses, and we need to focus on what is most essential, like our rent, our mortgage payments, our food, and our utilities. When our income becomes limited, or we are faced with crisis like what, again, we're experiencing, um, we may have to pause those non-essential items, like gym memberships. Um, you know, it's easy for us now to maybe think about how can we work out in our homes. Um, we may also need to pause things like subscriptions to our favorite magazines. We can do that online, so you can go online and see many of your favorite magazines there. Or we may have to think about not consistently eating out. This may be the time since we're at home, we have some time on our hands that we can now prepare some fresh food. So what actions can you take when you're building out or revising your budget? First, you need to know what you're paying out monthly on your fixed expenses and your overheads. Um, this is an area where you can cut some of those expenses. Um, you also want to make sure you know the term, things like the terms, the amount of payment, um, your payment frequency, and any debt that you owe. Um, you know, you want to make sure you have a good understanding of what they are right now. And again, this should include things like your credit cards, your lines of credit, any personal loans, um, anything, any debt you have outstanding, now is the time to have a great understanding of what those are. You also want to have some money goals. This is important. So if you're driving every day to work and now you find that you're working from home, you may find that you have some extra savings and um, because you're, no, you're not paying for gas anymore, you're not commuting, so you, you don't have that expense. So now is the time to imagine how you can save this. So this could be a money goal on, you know, how to put this away and how to make, turn this into some type of emergency fund. Um, it, it was said that for those who commute or those who are driving, it could be upwards to 500 a month that you could be saving right now. Now it's time to think about how do you track your spending. So they are budgeting tools that can help you manage your money, both for your personal and your business spending. Um, there are many resources um, out there um, that's available. For example, through the Alterna Savings mobile app, Alterna offers um, a My Receipt, and this allows you to have even more control over your budget by allowing you to store receipts and calculate your spending. Also, um, the Canadian government offers a budget calculator for easy tracking. And you can find this on, their, on the website if you go to fcac slash acfc budget planner. Um, you can find that on the government website. And I know that at the end of this webinar, there's a resource area that will list the exact website where you can get that. That is actually an Excel document, which is really easy to follow and to update. So how do you manage your debt? So right now, many Canadians are in uncertain positions regarding their things like their rent, their mortgage, and bill payments at this time. Um, like I said, it's a very uncertain time. And this is the time, if you have not started to do so, to try and keep your debt under control. So we don't want to be overspending at this time. We want to save as much as we can for those um, president emergencies um, that may crop up. So if we continue to live above our means um, or live beyond our paycheck, we may find ourselves being reactive rather than being proactive when we have an economic downturn. So, and if you do find yourself in this precarious situation, 
this is don't give up this is really not the time to give up you want to make sure you stay in regular communication with your lender your landlord or your service provider many financial institutions have put in place a plan to help you so things such as payment deferrals emergency loans um, they're also working hand in hand with the government to offer other financial solutions and also your service provider um, such as your phone your cable internet utilities um, those providers are offer, also offering some form of help um, so you want to check on the website of these institutions or the companies to find out you know what they're offering during these times um, also many of it can be case by case so again if you don't see this on their website you can call them up and explain your situation and again case by case they should be able to help you i just want to provide you an example you know of how a partnership like alterna and access has worked during this pandemic crisis um, to help our our community microfinance or borrowers those who um needed a small loan from us well when we first got hold of this pandemic the first thing we did was call our members um the alternative microfinance staff and i know the access staff we reached out to everyone in our portfolio to make sure that they were first okay and then we offered a solution which was some deferral in their loan payments where they could pay at a later date um, i can't tell you how many of our members felt as if you know this was a big relief for them first to hear that we reached out and then to have a financial solution um, to help them through this difficult period um, we continue to check in and they're also checking in so it's, it's coming both ways right now um, we're under we're helping them to understand things like their payment terms the fluctuation in their interest rates and government loans what does all that mean and you know how then how can they utilize um, those financial tools that's available to them so again plan ahead um, you, we want to make sure that you revise your budget as we discussed um, you want to make sure you have savings to put aside so you can resume um, your loan payments once those deferrals are over. And again, that savings may come from, you know, what I previously discussed in some of the slides, um, the savings from not driving or from not commuting or from eating at home. You now have that savings that may be able to help you, you know, once those loan deferral payments are over and you have to start taking back control of that. So as I mentioned, again, this is not a time to take on new debt. Um, we, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, you can afford the debt that you have now. And, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, you're not going to an option that you may think is easy, like the payday lenders. So while it may be easy to get that type of financing when you find yourself very strapped, um, you could be trapped in a cycle with very high fees and very difficult to repay later on. So what we're seeing in terms of credit cards, um, with business closures and income disruption, you know, it may seem easy to place more of your expenses on your credit card. And, you know, this is not really a good use of of your credit card especially if you don't know when your earnings are gonna sort of your earning income is gonna sort of pick back up so you want to be careful on how you use your credit card um, it's gonna be if you max out your credit card at this time it's gonna have a negative impact on your score um, and too so often you know we see the credit cards get maxed out individuals are only able to make the minimum payment and we know that if you're only making the minimum payment that it could take years if not decades to pay off so again you want to be able to minimize how you're using those cars 
So during this time, it is important for you to keep your balance low, pay off, pay off your cards in full if you can, and pay them before the due date if possible. Understand that the minimum payment may cost you over a long period of time because you will have accumulated more interest. And you also want to be able to review your statements to check for unauthorized transactions at this time. If you have to use credit, remember to use the lower interest credit cards first. So those that have the lowest interest rates or the credit such as your secure line of credit may be a better option because again, because it's secure, you may have a better rate there. And if you find yourself with lost income during this crisis, be, be, you need to know that some credit card companies are lowering their interest rates. So again, this is a case for you to reach out, communicate and um, get the help that's available for you out there. So if you borrow in Canada, you probably have a credit report. It is a snapshot of your credit history and how you handle your financial obligations. It is also one of the main tools that lenders use on how to assess your credit worthiness. Each person credit report includes the following information. So your personal identifying information. This could be your name, your address, your date of birth, your social insurance number, however, that is optional. It also contains your credit history. And this is any credit that you have on the credit report, such as your credit cards, your personal loans, your line of credits, your car loans, and in some cases, you might see your mortgages on there as well. It also has public records. And public records, for example, if you have a car loan with a institution or a car dealer, um, they may have a lien on that and that becomes a public record. So that would show up on your credit report. It also contains your report inquiries. So whenever you apply for credit, whether it's um, a credit card or whether you're renting or leasing, um, a place, um, it will show up on your as an inquiry that you've done. There's also an area for dispute. So if you need to change, add, or delete um, inaccurate information, that dispute statement is the area that you would use. And above all, you want to make sure that your profile the, and the information on your credit report is accurate and error-free. So I should say that there are two primary credit bureaus in Canada, Equifax and TransUnion, and each of these bureaus collect information regarding the accounts that you have, the balances, and the credit limits. And you may also see on there what is called collection activities on bad debt that you might have. So if you had debt that ha had gone unpaid, that will also be on your credit report as well. And um, you also have a credit score. So if you borrowed in the past, chances are you do have this credit report and it will reflect how you pay your bills, whether you pay on time or in full, and it will show your credit score. And your credit score is a number based on your credit report or your financial history. Scores are based on a scale between 300 to 900, with 300 being the worst and 900 being the best. And the average Canadian has a score of around 700. The credit bureau allows organizations to see your score and determine the risk dealings with you. Um, so whether they're going to lend to you or not. 
So lenders um, can use this score to see if you qualify for a loan and what interest rate you would pay. Normally scores under 650 um, can be at risk of not getting financing. So the lower the score, the more challenging it will be to get any type of financing. And if you do get that financing, it may be at a higher interest rate. So what makes up your score? As you can see here, um, payment history at 35% and utilization rate at 30% have the biggest impact on your credit score. When you miss payment, you start to lose points. So for example, you miss a payment this month and that may cost you about 50 to 60 points. Now, if you miss all your payments in a given month, you can lose upwards to 100 or 150 points or more. So imagine that if the average score is 700, and you miss all your payments in a given month, your score could then be at 550. So it could be lower than, um, and that's considered a poor score and it could be challenging to get financing. So a tip that I like to say here is to make your payments on time, even if it's the minimum payment. Um, because if you're making that minimum payment, it is gonna show as a payment being made as agreed. And then we have your utilization ratio. And as you can see here, that's 30%. And that represents the amount of revolving, revolving credit that you're currently using divided by the total amount of revolving credit you have available, or how much credit you owe divided by your credit limit. It is usually expressed in a percentage form. So for example, if you see something that says 95% utilization, that means um, you have a very high utilization, you have almost maxed out your available credit. So a tip here would be, you always want to be no more than 30 to 50% of your credit usage. So the lower, the better. You want to have a low utilization rate. Then we have things like the length of credit, which refers to how long your credit has been reported on the credit bureau. If you are new to the credit system, you would have what is called limited credit. But over time, you will build up a track record and the longer the length of credit, the better. So a tip is if you have, for example, one credit facility and let's say it's a credit card on the credit report and you close that for like a new credit for a new credit card, remember that you are closing off the longest history and this is where you could lose the points. So consider, so a tip would be to consider reducing the limit if you're not gonna use that particular card or leaving that card until you build up a history with the new card. And then we have inquiries and that amounts for 10% of your score. So here, um, you wanna be sure to limit the times, limit the time your credit bureau is pulled and this because this can have a negative impact if you are, you know, every week sort of credit shopping. Um, if you have to seek credit, it is important for you to understand your credit report. So you may want to take a look at that first to make sure all the information on there is accurate and it's up to date. Um, you want to make sure that if there's anything derogatory or any credit issues that you address that to your best ability. And I would always say, have a conversation with your lender first and um, you know, explain to them the type of credit you're seeking and see if first they would help you. Because again, um, many lenders may have a cutoff score and you wanna make sure that you're not applying if you're under that credit score because then 
um, you know, you're just having these inquiries and you're going to be declined. So do your due diligence and um, reach out to the lender and explain your situation. And if, you know, if they're going to help you, they will have to pull the credit, but they may be able to give you some advice that you can follow first. And now we have um, in, on your credit report, you will see credit ratings. And um, you know, credit ratings will range anywhere from what is called an R0 to an R9. And the R means revolving. You can also have I, which means installment. So revolving would be like your credit card. It revolves, you use it and you pay it. Installment is usually has a fixed payment um, and will pay off in a specific time. So when you see an R0, this is mean you may have just received credit and it's too new to be rated. So it's usually under 30 days or that you've gotten this credit, you've not made any payments. So it's really hard to give you a score. An R1 means that you pay within 30 days of the due date. Um, so you are paying as agreed. And R2 could mean that um, you've missed the payment um, or missed one or two payments. And R3, um, again, now you've missed three payments. Usually, um, you know, if you are anywhere from R1 to R3, if you, if, sorry, R2 to R3 and you miss payments, if you start making your payments as agreed and you make six consecutive payments, you're gonna see your rating goes back to that R1. Um, lenders will still be able to see that you were at some point in time, you've missed a payment or two, um, but as long as you can explain that to them and now you're back to your R1 and you know you are in good standing. We have to be very careful when we start getting to our fives and seven, eights and nines, um, because those are very challenging. So R5, for example, means that your account is 120 days past due. Um, R fours and fives, you know, you're, 100 and, you're 90 to 120 days past due. And this is the time where most lenders are may start to think about um, taking this debt off their books. Um, it doesn't mean that it's forgiven, um, but this is where they could put this in a collection agency. So it may go to a third party collection agency at that time. And um, when we get to an R9, uh, for sure it's written off. They're gonna write this off again um, and place it in collections. Um, we see our nines when there's bankruptcy. So if you had to go through a bankruptcy, your rating will drop. Even if you were R1, it could drop right down to an R9. Um, so, you know, we want to be, do our best to stay in the R1 ratings as much as we can. And what to watch for on your credit report. So, you know, you want to keep an eye on your credit report because it can protect against things like identity theft, fraud, inaccurate reporting. And, you know, it helps to ensure that your score is not sliding. If you're watching your credit report, um, you know, you can see that score and, um, you know, you'll know that whether it's going up or down. So it is important um, to check your credit report at least once a year. Again, you wanna make sure that um, the information is factual. You want to watch things like your credit card, your line of credit and your bank statements. And you wanna compare those to your credit report. Um, again, making sure those items are yours and the information is correct. If you have you have the right to dispute any information that you believe is wrong. So, you know, you can ask the reporting agency to correct errors. And again, that is free. And you would do that using that dispute form. Um, it's attached to your credit report. Um, always check your information to make sure it's factual and accurate. 
Um, you should know that neg negative information can only be removed after a certain period of time, usually seven years. So for example, if you had a credit card and you did not pay that and it was sent to a collection agency, um, you can't simply ask the credit bureau to remove that. Um, you have to make restitution to that debt. Once it's paid, um, it will take some time and it will, by itself, it will come off the credit report. Also, again, you can obtain your credit report for free. Your information is free. Um, you can reach out to Equifax or TransUnion to get that report. However, if you want to see the score, um, it does come at a fee. So you have to request that online um, through Equifax and there is a charge um, for that fee. So I think I'm gonna turn this back over to you now, um, Otis. Thank you, Susan. So we're just going to go over the final couple of points. Uh, and one is related to scams and identity theft, which uh, Susan has briefly touched on. And this concerns uh, how individuals have been uh, using um, this current situation as a means to uh, collect uh, unauthorized information uh, that could uh, potentially be damaging uh, for individuals. So it's important to just keep uh, vigilant and make sure that you are uh, guarding yourself against any unauthorized uh, uh, access to your private information, which has implications on your credit. Um, as Google has been re reported uh, recently that they have been blocking up to 100 million emails each day and over 18 million of those are COVID-19 related meaning that people are using this uh, current crisis to exploit uh, honest uh, and uh, vulnerable individuals uh, in order to get their information and use it for their own uh, ends, which are not uh, going to be um, uh, useful for uh, our own individual purposes. So it's very important to uh, safeguard your in personal information right now you will be getting emails, you'll be getting calls, you'll be getting uh, text messages that may look authentic, that may look legitimate. And so it's important to verify that that information is indeed coming from the sources that it is coming from uh, in order to make sure that you're not uh, giving information upfront when you do receive a call. Uh, we know in everyday life outside this pandemic, there's always been uh, scams. Uh, relating to uh, taxes, relating to uh, all sorts of other things uh, which are designed to uh, gain access to people's individual information. And more so now because uh, people are looking to uh, capitalize on the current crisis so that they can benefit, which is unethical, but uh, it is what it is. People, there are people out there who are right now uh, are doing this uh, for their own immediate gain. So it's important to make sure that you, when you do check your credit, as uh, Susan mentioned, you keep an eye on how things are reported, uh, whether you have had any suspicious information as a result of uh, uh, information that you've not provided or you, it's coming from uh, a, a source that you don't know and to quickly report that uh, immediately so that your credit does not get impacted. Now thinking beyond the crisis, uh, it's very important to uh, use the uh, tips uh, that uh, Susan has mentioned uh, in this presentation to build on uh, in terms of uh, what's coming next uh, when things return to the new normal or the normal that uh, will be uh, coming uh, out of this crisis so that you stay on track and you uh, maintain those good habits or those uh, key strategies that you have learned throughout this time, like living within your means and keeping on track with your budget, tracking your spending, 
and maintaining your debt levels uh, uh, in check, uh, watching your uh, credit, and more importantly, looking at ways you can save, uh, as uh, Susan alluded to, because that puts you in a better position as you work towards uh, building that emergency fund or uh, just in general in the habit of continuously saving a portion of your uh, income, uh, your check, uh, and, and so on. So that's very important uh, to uh, maintain a positive outlook as you uh, build on the foundation and that is uh, you have set now and with all the resources and the information you have uh, uh, received. So we've got a compilation of some useful resources and links that you can uh, check out uh, when you revisit this uh, uh, webinar again uh, and uh, follow those links and you'll be able to uh, get more uh, important information that could help you in terms of uh, planning ahead and you have better uh, sense of uh, what uh, supports are available should you have any specific need uh, that needs to be addressed uh, directly and you can reach out to those uh, uh, relevant uh, re uh, government bodies or whether it's a company or an organization so that you can uh, get that support. So now we're moving into a time for uh, Q&A and thank you for joining us again uh, in this webinar and thank you to Susan for those uh, insights into some of the key things that we can be doing during this time. So I'm just uh, going to uh, look at uh, some of the key questions that uh, people have uh, right now that uh, have been posted uh, during the presentations. And to get us started, one of those questions is around uh, the uh, support program that the government has uh, uh, made available, uh, the CERB. And the question is, uh, will I need to repay the uh, funds that I get through this support program? Okay, thank you for that. That's a great question. Um, you know, I would first say that for a question like this, you should actually go to the CRA website, um, Government of Canada. Um, but, um, you know, there are specific um, criteria for getting, for example, the Canada Emergency Response um, Benefit. Um, and if you meet those criteria, um, you know, you wouldn't have to pay that back. But if for some reason you're not meeting the criteria, um, there is going to be some time where they will, um, you know, maybe look at what happened. Um, so again, for, for that, I would say definitely go to their website and make sure that you are familiar with the, the criteria and eligibility of, you know, getting one of those serve um, payments. Okay. Uh, we do have another question around the deferral of payments. Um, will interest be still be charged on a loan when you arrange a deferral payment? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's obviously these um, deferrals and skip payment option. Um, for most of the loans, the interest continues to accumulate. So interest accumulates daily. There's a daily interest that accumulates. So your deferral meaning that means your payment is just put to the end of your term. So for example, if you had a 24 month term, now you've got 26 because you've got the two months um, extra that you will have to pay at some point in time. But um, definitely in most cases, the interest is accumulating on these um, deferrals. Okay. I guess this, uh, you just answered the next questions, which was around uh, the uh, length of time uh, that uh, the deferral payment uh, will in affect a uh, loan term, because uh, the question was around, does this uh, deferment uh, affect my term uh, for the loan? So I think you've already addressed that, that, uh, that uh, two months or three months that you get as uh, deferment uh, will be tagged on to the end of the um, the, the term. So it means that essentially it's going to be extended. Yeah, that's correct. And, you know, keep in mind many um, loan products um, may have, I know, for example, um, through our microfinance program and access, you can pay off your loan at any time without um, any penalty. So, you know, you may have to defer your loan payment now, 
but maybe um, you know a year from now you're in a much better financial situation you've maybe got your job back and you want to maybe pay down that debt you can make a principal only payment and you know cut that and um, you know be right back on track okay. There's another question here on credit and a few uh, at that. Uh, will checking my credit impact my credit score? So if you're checking your credit yourself, no. Um, but if a, um, a lender or some sort of credit um, company is checking your credit, that can impact, um, and, you know, if we go back to that chart where we look at inquiries, you know, if you're doing a few inquiries and every time you do inquiries, you do get, it does impact your score. But if you're checking it yourself, um, you, should, you would be fine, yes. Okay, and how often should I check my credit during this time of COVID-19? You mentioned the different, uh, you know, things that could impact my credit and how we should be watching our credit. Uh, how often should I check my credit uh, during this time is another question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's changed. I mean, once annually um, is good. Personally, I would add another time. I mean, I might check it once during this three to six month period. But on average, you know, you only need to check your credit once a year. Um, but like I said, um, you may want to just to get a better handle of your credit you may want to check it now to see exactly what is outstanding, what is on that. And then, you know, six months or eight months later, you can revisit that if, you know, things have changed. Okay. And there's another question about uh, Equifax and TransUnion. Are they different in their credit reports or what is the main difference between the two? Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, I mean, I can only say that certain financial institutions use certain, you know, credit bureaus. So some may be more specific to TransUnion, some may be more specific to Equifax. So it depends on the financial institution and the lender on their preference. Um, I have noticed that there is um, a variation in the scores. So someone who pulls their credit report at Equifax, and then I see the TransUnion, there's usually a good 20, 30 point difference between the two sometimes. So, um, you know, it may be in how each of those um, bureaus are collecting the information and, you know, the amount of weighting they're putting on specific pieces. Um, I, Outside of that, um, it's a very challenging, challenging question to answer in terms of what is really the big difference between the two. And I think there's a one that's uh, following up that uh, ties into that uh, conversation around the two uh, credit bureaus. Uh, is it recommended to check both Equifax and TransUnion credit reports? Yes, um, definitely. I would check both because, like I said, um, some lenders and institutions will um, report, you know, maybe using one. So, you know, you want to make sure that the information on both would be accurate because most of us may have a file with both um, of the credit bureaus, TransUnion and Equifax. So you should be checking both. Okay, great. And there's a question about other platforms that allow you to uh, check your credit, uh, like Credit Karma, and the question is, how reliable is Credit Karma, for example? Mm -hmm. I mean, I cannot tell you to subscribe to a third-party um, sort of credit house, like Credit Karma organization, um, because I don't know how reliable their information is. You have to be careful. You have to safeguard your information. Um, the two that the financial institutions use that we are aware of is Equifax and TransUnion. Um, so if you're going to go to a Credit Karma, you have to understand that there may be risk involved um, in how your information is safeguarded. Um, and I cannot say that in certainty because, uh, again, they're a third party and they're not on the subscribe list that we use. And the other question is about um, 
uh, Alterna product that you mentioned or tool about receipt tracking. Uh, do I need to be an Alterna member to use the receipt tracking tool? Um, well, you have to be a member. You have to be able to sign into your account. So, you, you know, you would have to be a member of Alterna to use that, yes. Okay. And uh, should I consider consolidating my debt during this time? Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good question because there are some pros and cons um, to debt consolidation. So, you know, you want to consolidate because number one, it could be just easier to manage, especially during a period like this where you have um you know one payment so if you consolidate you're just going to have the one payment you won't have the multiple credit cards and loans and and you know there could be you know any mistake in terms of missing a payment so sometimes that one consolidation is good um it may help you improve your credit score because now you know when you consolidate you may be paying off those credit cards that may may have been sort of at their max so now your scores could sort of go up because of that so that that could be a, a, a good thing again um you have to make sure when you're consolidating like what where are you doing this is important and the interest rate is important as well so you know you don't want to consolidate a high paying interest credit card for another high paying loan interest loan because that doesn't make any sense. So you want to make sure that you would be maybe getting a better rate and that rate makes sense for that consolidation. Um, and then you also have to remember if you consolidate and you have now this large debt, it could be over a longer period of time. So it may take a little bit longer to pay off. Um, so it's really the pros and cons of what is going to work best for you. Um, if you feel you want this one payment and it's easier to manage and now your interest rate is going to be lower if you do this and your credit score is going to go up, um, it would make sense. Okay, great. Um, another one is, should I continue to contribute to RRSP and RESP during this time of COVID-19? Okay, so first I have to say I'm not a financial planner. Um, we have professionals at Alterna that is best suited for a question like, like that. But, you know, I would say just generally, you know, if you have the opportunity to continue saving um, in whatever manner it may be, whether it's an RSP, a TFSA, um, your children's education, um, you definitely want to continue doing that. Um, because, you know, when we come out of this, we know that these types of savings are going to be more important than ever. Okay. And this question relates to credit card. Uh, does transferring my credit card balance to another credit card with a low interest affect me? So this really goes back to something I talked about in the presentation around length of history. So, you know, if you have one credit card and now you're offered a new card and you decide to transfer everything from that old card to the new card and close that old card that would definitely have a negative impact on your credit because you've closed off your longest length of history so in that respect you know i would say um, you still want to keep that card maybe open and reduce that limit until you build some sort of report with this new card. But definitely, you know, transferring it on to the lower interest means you're paying less interest. You're able to pay off more of the principal of that credit card. So essentially, that is a good thing. Okay, great. Okay. I should also say there too, um, when you're doing that, again, you want to be, make sure you read all the fine prints though, because sometimes it will give you a lower interest for a specific period. So it may say six months. So you have to ask yourself, um, after six months, what is the interest rate that am I paying? Am I able to, or are you able to pay off that credit now that you've put on this card within that six months period? 
So, you know, those are some of the questions you may have to ask before making that decision. All right. I think those are all the questions that we had uh, uh, from our uh, audience and um, wanted to see if you've got any final words of advice, uh, Susan, before we end the session. Great. So first, I, I really want to thank um, Otis and Access for, you know, having me here, um, you know, to speak about this. This is really an important topic at this time. Um, I think as the more information we can get to help us through, you know, this pandemic crisis is going to means we're going to come out stronger and better at the other end. So, you know, just remember as much as you can put away, um, start saving because, you know, we don't want to end up where, you know, we have to be reactive rather than proactive, you know, if something else occurs. I think we want to take these lessons and, you know, we want to apply, um, apply and making sure that, you know, we're more equipped and we're better, um, you know, to handle, you know, any economic downturn that may come our way. And lastly, I just want to say, you know, stay safe um, during this sort of pandemic that we have. And um, hopefully we'll all come out of this again stronger and better um, as a community and as individuals. Thank you, Susan, for those uh, words of advice. As we move to closing, I would like to invite you to follow us uh, on uh, our social media channels, as well as uh, check out our website for more information about what we do at Access Community Capital Fund, as well as uh, check out our upcoming webinars in our Adapting and Innovating Beyond COVID-19 series. Uh, we have uh, webinars each week uh, and uh, frequently to give you uh, more information on what's topical and uh, relevant uh, discussion points uh, that you will need to get through this uh, crisis and to come out stronger uh, at the end of uh, it all. So thank you so much for joining us and we welcome you to uh, uh, complete any evaluations that will be coming your way so that you can tell us uh, what is uh, more important to you that we should be addressing and we'll endeavor to um, make sure we uh, do it in the best possible way and we hope to uh, see you again soon in our upcoming webinars. Thank you so much and have a great afternoon.